Hello and welcome to our report from plenary here in Strasbourg. MEPs were united in their call for an end to Gaddafi's rule in Libya. They passed a resolution backing a series of measures to support pro-democratic forces and condemned the brutal attacks on civilians. Harsh criticism of the Libyan regime and a call to action, including support for a no-fly zone and diplomatic recognition of the pro-democracy rebellion. The European Parliament passed a resolution calling for an immediate end to the brutal dictatorial regime of Colonel Gaddafi. It, quote, condemns in the strongest terms the blatant and systematic violations of human rights in Libya. It notes the indiscriminate use of machine guns, snipers, warplanes and helicopters against civilians, resulting in a steeply increasing death toll and more than 200,000 refugees. The regime of Gaddafi must end now, and for that reason the message must be accompanied with a series of increasing measures. First and foremost, Mr. President, the no-fly zone. The resolution calls for quick EU reaction to provide humanitarian assistance and says the EU and its member states must save Libyan civilians from large-scale armed attacks. Thus, it says, no option foreseen in the UN Charter is to be ruled out, including a no-fly zone aimed at preventing the regime from targeting the population. But the resolution also notes this should be in compliance with the UN mandate and coordination with the Arab League and the African Union. In parliamentary debate before the vote, the European Union's foreign policy chief said preparations were underway for action under the EU's Common Security and Defense Policy, or CSDP, but she urged caution. That engagement would be to support current evacuation and humanitarian efforts. As always, as always with any CSDP options, they need to be very carefully analyzed and we will need proper answers on questions of mandate, resources and objectives. The resolution also calls on the EU to establish relations with the rebels' interim transitional national council to meet humanitarian needs and support a democratic transition that would ensure participation by a wide spectrum of Libyan society and empower women and minorities. On the domestic front, MEPs also debated a change to the Lisbon Treaty required to set up a permanent financial stability mechanism. They expressed some doubts about the direction the change was taking. The European Financial Stability Facility was set up last year to counter speculation threatening to undermine economic recovery in Europe. Debt-ridden Greece and Ireland were given substantial credits to prevent costs for their borrowing from spiraling out of control. The Financial Stability Facility is a temporary measure and is supposed to shut down in 2013. To replace it with a permanent stability mechanism, a change in the Lisbon Treaty is underway. Parliament will need to give its opinion on any change in the treaty, and debating the stability mechanism in Strasbourg, concerns were voiced this treaty change represents a break with the community method of decision-making and sets a precedent for the future. German MEP Elmar Brock has drawn up options for Parliament's support for the treaty change. We need to look at the weaknesses of the intergovernmental approach. It means no or barely any parliamentary dimension, and it means inability to act in a number of areas because of calls for unanimity. This is why the Monet method of the community approach is more legitimate and it enables us to take more effective action. Brock also called for responsibility and policies to promote growth. So we have to have an opportunity to act together more strongly and this is why I'm glad that we are trying to achieve something. We are trying to boost credibility. We are looking at the Growth and Stability Pact, which does allow for interventions to occur. It bolsters the role of the Commission, there is the early warning system and there is the European semester and we are talking about budgetary discipline in member states as well. All these things can and should happen and we are looking at how to implement them. All of these enhance our opportunities so we do not once again encounter a situation of the type that we have recently encountered and so that we can maintain and consolidate credibility. Parliament will vote on the stability mechanism later this month. 
Last year, the repatriation of Roma from France back to their country of origin drew attention to this 12 million strong ethnic minority, and Hungary announced that a Roma strategy would be a priority for its presidency of the EU. But here in Parliament, Livia Yaroka, the only Roma MEP, had already started work on a strategy for Roma inclusion in 2009. Her proposals were adopted by an overwhelming majority this week. Parliament is now the first of three institutions to put a concrete document on the table. Livia Yaroka hopes that her proposals will be taken on board by the Commission, who are also due to release their own proposals in early April. At a press conference in Strasbourg, she described her report as a paradigm shift away from the ethnic focus and towards regional and socio-economic aspects. She called on the Commission to draw what she called a crisis map, emphasising that exclusion is concentrated in underdeveloped micro-regions and wants an action plan to be agreed and implemented by all member states to bridge the hugest gap in fundamental rights in Europe. We are uh, talking about people who are living in very disadvantaged regions of Europe. Some of them are living sub-Saharan uh, poverty and these regions has to be uh, developed with the help of the EU responsibility lies on the member states but making sure that not only the Roma in these areas but also all those non-Roma who are living the same sort of poverty are also going to be reached. Her aim is to use existing funds effectively to fight poverty. This means, she said, working towards equal access to non-segregated education, health care and employment opportunities, as well as an end to the segregated living conditions, and the Commission should be able to take their member states to task on their implementation of the action plan. What we have learned in the last 20 years, most of the money spent on Roma issues have never arrived to the Roma. And not only uh, sanctions when it comes to the implementation of the race directive, but also there is some sort of uh, push is needed uh, to make sure that the money is uh, spent on the right way. And that's why uh, the, the performance reserve could be a good uh, solution. And also uh, similar to the single market scoreboard, a Roma strategy scoreboard could be useful as well. That's all for this month, but we'll be back in April with more news from Plenary. To keep up to date in the meantime, visit our website, eppgroup.eu. Thanks for watching.